Welcome to Geraldine's Bible and Song Sharing. I am singer and songwriter Geraldine Peng. This program is to share or guide the lost in having a better understanding and personal relationship with our Lord God, Creator and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, let's join me in today's Bible Messages. Thank you for joining me in sharing songs from my story concept album, Moonstone City, which is about my personal recovery. I am featuring this song titled Media Slave and how the King James Version Bible had inspired me in writing this song. Let's take a listen to Media Slave. Antichrist movement comes in different e pluribus unum forms of propaganda, be it through names of various movements that ends mostly with that ISM. That ISM equals, it means, I, self, me. That earthly, worldly human solutions that is not in the spirit of our Lord God Jesus Christ through his word, will, and time for us. The ultimate third way agenda is world government, state controlled world communism, state controlled global communitarianism, caught up in their impenetrable theories of social evolution or social engineering. A false unity in diversity or false peace and security through order ab chaos, order out of chaos. Order out of chaos is parallel to a phoenix bird rising up from the ashes of chaos from a palm tree that is a revival rebuff to a new firebird of false peace and security. The Egyptian phoenix was said to be as large as an eagle with brilliant scarlet and gold plumage and a melodious cry. Only one phoenix existed at any time and it was very long-lived. No ancient authority gave it a lifespan of less than 500 years. As its end approached, the phoenix fashioned a nest of aromatic bows and spices, set it on fire, and was consumed in the flames. From the pyre miraculously sprang a new phoenix, which after embalming its father's ashes, it an ache of myrrh. The phoenix had association to immortality and Heliopolis, city of the sun in Egypt, and the altar in the temple of the Egyptian god of the sun, Re. The phoenix was compared to undying Rome, 
and it appears on the coinage of the late Roman Empire as a symbol of the Eternal City. The King James Version Bible about these anti-Christ-like movements had been occurring for the past centuries, even before our Lord God Jesus Christ came in the flesh as a sonship. A very good example is 1 Samuel chapter 8. The corrupt leadership and judicial system was a reason for demanding a new system of government. Because of his age, Samuel had appointed his two sons to succeed him. Joel, which means the Lord is God, and Abijah, which means my father is the Lord. With Samuel as their father, they had received a godly upbringing, but they lived hypocritical lives. They did not follow in the steps of their father. They turned away from God and became greedy for money. They accepted bribes and perverted justice. In determining controversial cases, they accepted bribes and ruled in favor of the oppressor or guilty party. This wickedness reminded the people of Eli's two sons, and they feared returning to the lawless, corrupt days of the judges. Thus, a desire arose within the people for a new leadership, the leadership of a king. A desire to be like the surrounding nations was a reason the Israelites requested a king. The tribal leaders of Israel gathered together and traveled to Ramah. In conference with Samuel, they laid out their three reasons for desiring a king. Samuel was old, and his sons did not walk in his godly ways. Therefore, they desired to have a king just like all the nations. They demanded a king just like all the nations. They did not demand a king after God's own heart. The people should have desired a king who had the heart of God a man who was totally, wholeheartedly committed to God. This should have been their emphasis, their focus, but instead they emphasize a king just like all the nations. Their eyes and hearts were set upon the world and its ways instead of upon God and his way of righteousness. They were interested in the world's way of securing peace, security, prosperity, position, authority, power, honor, ceremony, and pleasure. They would never deny that they had an interest in the man's being a godly ruler, but their emphasis was not upon the spiritual or righteous commitment of the man. Having a king with a heart just like God's was not their focus. They wanted a king just like all the nations. They demanded the king just like all the nations. They did not demand a king after God's own heart. The people should have desired a king who had the heart of God, a man who was totally wholeheartedly committed to God. This should have been their emphasis, their focus, but instead, they emphasize a king just like all the nations. Their eyes and hearts were set upon the world and its ways instead of upon God and his way of righteousness. They were interested in the world's way of securing peace, security, prosperity, position, authority, power, honor, ceremony, and pleasure. They would never deny that they had an interest in a man's being a godly ruler, but their emphasis was not upon the spiritual or righteous commitment of the man. Having a king with a heart just like God's was not their focus. They wanted a king just like all the nations. Samuel anoints a Benjamite named Saul, who is crowned in Mizpah. Saul enjoys initial success defeating the Ammonites in battle, chapter 11. But then he makes a series of missteps. He presumptuously offers a sacrifice in chapter 13. He makes a foolish vow at the expense of his son Jonathan in chapter 14. And he disobeys the Lord's direct command in chapter 15. As a result of Saul's rebellion, God chooses another to take Saul's place. Meanwhile, God removes his blessing from Saul, and an evil spirit 
begins goading Saul toward madness in chapter 16. Samuel travels to Bethlehem to anoint a youth named David as the next king in chapter 16. Later, David has his famous confrontation with Goliath, the Philistine, and becomes a national hero in chapter 17. David serves in Saul's court, marries Saul's daughter, and is befriended by Saul's son. Saul himself grows jealous of David's success and popularity, and he attempts to kill David. David flees, and so begins an extraordinary period of adventure, intrigue, and romance. With supernatural aid, David narrowly but consistently eludes the bloodthirsty Saul in chapters 19. Through it all, David maintains his integrity and his friendship with Jonathan. Near the end of the book, Samuel has died, and Saul is a lost man. On the eve of a battle with Philistia, Saul seeks for answers. Having rejected God, he finds no help from heaven, and he seeks counsel from a medium instead. During the seance, Samuel's spirit rises from the dead to give one last prophecy. Saul would die in battle the next day. The prophecy is fulfilled. Saul's three sons, including Jonathan, fall in battle, and Saul commits suicide. For the past centuries, another very good example is when Apostle John was guided by an angel sent by our Lord God, Creator and Saviour Jesus Christ, to remind the seven churches to repent, or a candlestick will be removed from them. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches, Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamos, Tiatira, Sardis, Philadelphia and Laodicea. The angels in heaven were called stars. Seven candlesticks are the seven churches in reference to Revelation chapter 1 verse 20. The mystery of the seven stars which thou sawest in my right hand and the seven golden candlesticks. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches and the seven candlesticks which thou sawest are the seven churches. These seven churches generally worship the demonic spirits of the fallen angels of Genesis chapter 6, who rebelled against God Jesus Christ and taught mankind forbidden knowledge and fornicated with earthly women who gave birth to giants, and hence the great flood during Noah's time. You have fallen angels addressed differently in different regions or countries. These demonic souls of these fallen angels are somewhat contained in the wandering planetary ops up in the sky's heavens. Ephesus was the centre of the goddess Artemis worship in Greek, the daughter of Zeus and Leto and the twin sister of Apollo, and in Rome she is known as Diana. She is also known as Isis, Astat, Kali, Iana, Semiramis. Ephesus the city where the silversmiths rioted because of Paul's teaching, Silver was used for the worship in the shrines of Diana. Smyrna is an Ionian city who worship whom we call in Rome the fallen angel Mars, known as the god of war and an agricultural guardian. His parents are fallen angels Jupiter and Juno. Mars has an image with a spear and a shield. Also associated as Samael, the archangel in Talmudic and post-Talmudic lore, and the Zohar. In Sumeria, he is also known as Nergal, which is a deity worshipped throughout Mesopotamia, the Akkad Assyria and Babylonia, with the main seat of his worship at Kuta, represented by the mound of Tel Ibrahim. Nergal is mentioned in the Hebrew Bible as the deity of the city of Kuf, Kuta. And a man of Babylon made Sukkoth Binoth, and a man of Kuf made Nergal. Mentioned in 2 Kings chapter 17, verse 30. Being a deity of the desert, god of fire, which is one of the negative aspects of the sun, god of the underworld. In Greek, he was called Eris, more often spelled Eris. Eris was the son of Zeus and Hera, and it is said that both parents 
detested him. His sister, Athena, called him a thing of rage made of evil, a two-faced liar, and he seemed to delight in combat and violence for the pleasure of it. In battle, Eris was not the cool, commanding strategist his sister, Athena, was. Eris easily lost his temper and would rush into battle hot-headedly. With Harmony a nymph, Eris fathered the Amazons, a race of warrior women. In Pagamos, there is an altar of Zeus, or in Roman Latin, Jupiter, Jove, the seat of Satan, whom Antipas, a faithful martyr in Christ, was slain. In Revelation 2, verse 14, God chastening the church in Pergamos states, But I have a few things against thee, because thou hast there them that hold the doctrine of Balaam, who taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel, to eat things sacrificed unto idols, and to commit fornication. What is the doctrine of Balaam? In Numbers 22 to 24, we read how the Moabite king Balak tried to get Balaam to curse the people of Israel, to destroy their effectiveness in warfare. However, God would not allow Balaam to do this. So in Numbers 25, we read that the Israelites sinned against God, and so God judged them accordingly. Thousands died. So what caused this? Balaam wanted God to be angry with the people of Israel, so he advised Balak to get some of the most beautiful women in his kingdom to draw the men of Israel into unclean and idolatrous practices. Balaam knew that if the Israelites adopted pagan ways, God would not bless them as he had done. And so the Israelites let the pagans influence them, instead of standing firm on the sure word of God and his holy law. Satan has used this trick time and time again. The church at Pergamos had committed spiritual fornication in allowing people to compromise the word of God, allowing pagan ideas to be adopted into the church. Reference to 2 Peter 2 verse 15 and Jude chapter 11. Also refer to people who have rebelled against God and are compared to Balaam. The Nicolaitans were a false status conscious priestly order indulging in their practices and deeds identical to those of the Moabite king Balak and Balaam. Pagaman also worship a string of fallen angel characters, be it one of Apollo's sons, Eclipius, revered as the healer whom they had the Asclepion, a center of medical treatments. The rod of Asclepius is a snake and twine stuff which remains a symbol of medicine today. Those physicians and attendants who served this god Asclepius were known as the Therapeutli of Asclepius. They also worship other fallen angels like Dionysus, also known as Bacchus, Demeter, and Hera. Tyatira had a woman named Jezebel who called herself a prophetess. She taught and seduced the people of Tiatira to commit sexual immorality and to eat things sacrificed to idols. It was a cosmopolitan city with many foreigners who traveled from afar to be gathered to hear such apostate false prophesizing and teachings. Sardis was a temple of female goddesses, fallen angels, like Artemis, or also known as Diana, and even Venus. And it was the fourth largest Ionic temple in the world. It was also a place of the Sibylle, whereby priests were castrated in honour of the goddess Venus, who also ruled this city. Philadelphia, which is the modern al in Turkey, was founded in the 3rd century BC by one of the Pergamonian kings and named after Attalus II, 159 to 138 BC, who in spite of Roman pressure maintained loyalty and love for his brother Eumenes, 197 to 159 BC, 
and hence the name Philadelphia, which means brotherly love. It had so many fallen angel gods like Zeus and Dionysus, and so many temples that sometimes it was called Little Athens. Philadelphia with Smyrna have one thing in common, as God Jesus Christ mentioned in Revelation chapter 2, verse 9. The church of Smyrna, I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich, and I know the blasphemy of them, which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. And in Revelation chapter 3, verse 9, the church of Philadelphia, Behold, I will make them of the synagogues of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet, and to know that I have loved thee. Jesus spoke of this specific group of Jewish people in Philadelphia, which is in modern-day Turkey, who persecuted the Christians during that period. So Jewism is basically a religion, and this Jewish religion may even consist of esoteric tradition in Judaism that is not biblical and mystery Babylonian-like many pagan religions. And the believer in Jewism can be converted and not come from the region of Israel, and yet may even migrate to Israel. Generally, a true Israelite who has a genuine lineage may believe in the Torah, which is the Old Testament, Old Covenant, but still reject that the true one and only Messiah God, who is Jesus Christ, who came 2,000 years ago and had adopted such pagan religions, and still deny Jesus Christ. From the Old Testament, which is of the Old Covenant, Israel was divided into two regions, being north and south. The north of Israel, which had the scattering of the 12 tribes of northern Israel, and in the south, Judah. The Israelites formed their capital in the city of Samaria, and the Judeans kept their capital in Jerusalem. The history of the both kingdoms is a litany of ineffective, disobedient, and corrupt kings. When the Hebrews had first asked for a king in the book of Judges, they were told that only God was their king. When they approached Samuel the prophet, he told them the desire for a king was an act of disobedience and that they would pay dearly if they established a monarchy. The history told in the Hebrew book Kings bears out Samuel's warning. The Hebrew empire eventually collapses. Moab successfully revolts against Judah, and Ammon successfully secedes from Israel. Within a century of Solomon's death, the kingdoms of Israel and Judah were left as tiny little states. Examples of the invasion or conquest of Israel in 722 BC, the Assyrians, then the Babylonians later conquered Judah. Judah would be conquered by the Chaldeans. And in 701, Judah soon fell victim to the power struggles between Assyrians, the Babylonians, and the Egyptians. Babylonian king Nebuchadnezzar raised an expedition to punish Judah in 597 BC. The new king of Judah, Jehoiakim, handed the city of Jerusalem over to Nebuchadnezzar, who then appointed a new king over Judah, Zedekiah. Zedekiah defected from the Babylonians one more time. Nebuchadnezzar responded with another expedition in 588 and conquered Jerusalem in 586. Nebuchadnezzar caught Zedekiah and forced him to watch the murder of his sons. Then he blinded him and deported him to Babylon again. So generally, the land of Israel and true Israelites had been invaded many times over by non-Israelites, or they themselves had been scattered in different regions. The church of Laodicea is a city originally named Diospolis, the city of Jupiter, and then Roas. It was founded by the Seleucid king Antiochus II, a king of the Hellenistic Seleucid kingdom who reigned 261 BC to 246 BC and named for his wife Laodice about 260 BC. He rebuilt it and populated it with Syrians and Jews who migrated from Babylonia. 
Laodicea, like Rome, was built upon seven hills. It was one of Asia Minor's most flourishing cities. Laodicea was a wealthy industrial city, for it prospered primarily due to its trade route location, which made it a hub for large money transactions. The sheep kept around the city were also known for their fine black wool. The city minted coinage, some of which have inscriptions, showing evidence of the worship of the pagan deity Zeus and of the emperors. These seven churches of Revelation had never ceased and are still occurring. Our Lord God, Creator and Saviour Jesus Christ had since warned us to repent. to Geraldine's Bible and Song Sharing with me, singer and songwriter Geraldine Peng. This program is supported and sponsored by listeners like you. For information, www.geraldinepng.com Now, until next time, remember, Jesus Christ is our Lord God, Creator and Savior.